Thanks for joining us, Laura. We are so lucky to have you join us for the uh, Marshall McLennan Better by Design event. Um, today, uh, Laura Maori will be sharing with us her thoughts around the changing nature of risk. Um, Laura has had a number of senior roles at Guy Carpenter. She currently is the global head of distribution. Um, and prior to that, she was the global head of property. Um, so Laura, before we get started, would love just to hear some of your uh, quick perceptions and thoughts around the nature of risk and what your um, what your perceptions are around it. Yeah, so you know, I've I've been in the reinsurance business for a very very long time, going back to Hurricane Andrew that really started to set the stage for some of the ways that you know maybe a more modern way of approaching thinking about and measuring risk at that point in time where insurance companies and, and other entities didn't even necessarily know where all of their business was or how it would be impacted by these, these big property types of events. And so most of my career, I've grown up in that, in thinking about risk and how to measure it and, and how to mitigate it and how to transfer it. And that's really led into now the, the paradigm that we're, we're currently facing which is all of the things that are putting pressure on the way that we have been doing things and those more traditional approaches. And that stems from climate change, which is really big and really broad as a topic and could have very far reaching and very intense localized consequences at the same time to also things like emerging technologies and what sorts of differences does this introduce when we think about risk and the types of risks that we're exposed to, but also how we solve those risks. Because mm -hmm. things that are emerging and evolving, one, are happening more and more quickly, uh, but two, give us the tools also that we didn't have to solve some of these issues. Great. Right. And, and thinking about kind of these new um, emerging trends around risk, um, what observations have you had recently that stand out as being most powerful to you and inspire you to think differently about it? Yeah. So, you know, the fact that we're talking to each other uh, via video conference and, and this whole event has come about this way underscores, right, the different reality that, that we're sitting in and something nobody would have pictured a year ago or six months ago or however long it's been. Um, and, and, you know, so the biggest thing for me is in the situation that we've all been thrown into is that really underscores the need for us to identify and to evaluate risk in a very thoughtful way and then to find ways to implement solutions or to implement preparations for things that we identify further down the road. Um, it, it really stresses and underscores a little bit, I, I think, I hope, more urgency around those kinds of things. So pandemic was not an unknown. Mm -hmm. This is something that, that we knew could exist in the world. And honestly, we could have been better prepared. But when we face these, these big critical types of decisions, we tend to focus on things that we, we truly see in front of us or know are possible or believe are possible and not the things that perhaps feel a bit too big to solve or feel like they're out there on the time horizon. Right. And you know, so now maybe we underscore a little bit more the fact that there are some difficult choices. There are some uh, risk reward trade offs that we're going to have to think about and be prepared to make as we deal with some of these these bigger issues. Absolutely. So as you think about kind of the way we in which we identify the types of risk now, now the types of solutions that we have to start to think about. 
There's often a lot of talk about this delineation between a pre-COVID world and a post-COVID world. Are there things that businesses and business leaders should be carrying forward as they think about how to identify risk, the types of solutions that they have around risk and how they might be, be thinking about it? Are there things that um, come to mind for you? Yeah, absolutely. So there are a lot of things that we were doing right before when we talk about the pre-COVID world, right? Um, hundreds of organizations, thousands of people that are, are focused and have been really dedicated and focused to assessing risk and the changing nature of that risk and finding solutions and trying to embed those solutions in the way that we plan for and prepare for and mitigate those risks. Um, the amount of dedication and creativity that's already out there is substantial. So I would hope that that the scores of people watching this, hopefully there are scores of people watching this, um, fall into that category, right? And, and that's part of why you're attending this type of event. We are smart people. We are creative people. Um, we are focused on finding solutions. That shouldn't change, right? Um, what, what I think we can hope to change is the magnitude of the response necessary around some of these things, the willingness to go a bit further outside the box, um, the, the willingness to say that, you know what, um, the sky might be falling and we might have to make some hard choices when necessary, whereas going into into COVID, you know, it, it felt on some of these things a lot like uh, running a marathon uphill the entire way. And mm -hmm. it's not, not an easy thing. Absolutely. So you talked about the willingness to go further in thinking about these types of risks and think outside the box and also um, the magnitude of effort. Are there any other kind of things that we should be building on um, in at least how we responded to risk in this post-COVID era that we should actually think about um, carrying, fo uh, carrying forward or um, managing other types of risks, not just pandemics. Yeah, absolutely. And, and maybe, you know, I'll, I'll answer that a little bit differently. This is, this is one of the things that I've been thinking about outside of just this how we measure and identify risk set of boundaries, but um, the, the whole idea of how we've had to connect with each other over the last six months has put us in a situation we never would have chosen by ourselves. But the interconnectivity that's developed across boundaries based on that way we've been required to, to interact is really something that, that hopefully we take um, and we build on going forward. So we've got some, some big issues out there. And in trying to solve those big issues, uh, you know, there's, there's really easy ways to connect across groups, across people, across geographies. We've all been doing it. And um, we're getting better at it. We're getting more comfortable doing it. So tapping into people that may not be in your immediate circle uh, really helps us to come up with solutions that we might not have come up with otherwise. And, and that is something that I hope we take forward and build on. Absolutely. Great points. Um, you kind of also mentioned, talked about um, how we've been able to respond so quickly and connect across so quickly in response to this pandemic. What else do you think is possible now, given how we've responded to this? Um, in the post-COVID era? Well, almost anything should be possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would say, first of all, there, there are hundreds of things going on every day that we would hope to see acquire broader adoption, right? Um, and I'll give you an example. We do, uh, we do work with an organization called IBHS, the, the Institute for Business and Home Safety. And they have a number of resources. If you go out to their website, they have all sorts of things that help consumers and businesses understand 
how to measure risks, and how to mitigate those risks. They're already doing that work. They have an incredible facility in South Carolina um, where they have all kinds of, of tools and the infrastructure to help them constantly, day in, day out, figure out how to, how to solve problems. I mean, think um, huge, huge scale wind tunnel where they can take the entire infrastructure of a house and expose it to hurricane force winds type of, of research that they're doing. So based on their work, they know there's a number of things that can happen right now that will make a building more resistant to wildfire. And they know at this point in time that you could build a structure new using all of those tools and techniques and materials right now for basically the same cost, you could build a building without those tools and techniques. The question is, how do you, how do you incent people to make those decisions or how do you educate people to make those decisions, right? So if I were a homeowner in, in a, a bushfire exposed area um, and I was going to build a house, I would happily build a house that's fire resistive but do I even have the materials and the knowledge and the know-how to be able to do that and to make those selections? And is my builder educated on making those selections? And then when I go to get insurance, is my insurance company thinking about the kinds of decisions I've made to right. build a smarter house that then gives me the incentive on, on a reduced uh, premium, right? So now I'm benefiting financially because I've made some smart decisions that I was able to find out about and know about. And that flows all the way through for the insurance company based on what we do. We put a whole portfolio of that business together and ask other people to take on components of that risk. And when they're looking at that portfolio of business, they should be able to say, okay, there's more attractive risk in that portfolio of business. Therefore, I'm more willing to put capital to protect that, right? There's this whole chain that goes all the way through from an individual homeowner making decisions to do something to you know the very, very end result in a reinsurance transaction actually having an impact. Um, so you know, there's there's some really great examples in that space of, of things when we think about the what's possible now. One other example that uh, highlights really well this idea of the what's possible now and leveraging technology or thinking about solutions differently. There's, there's a great um, documentary on blockchain that I saw uh, not too long ago, which, um, you know, probably sounds terrible to a lot of people out there, but it wasn't really actually so much about blockchain as it was about information and tracking information and who owns that information. And there was a segment in the documentary where they were talking about the way that nonprofits have been able to take blockchain technology to utilize them in ways that are very, very different than what we might think of as logically an application for blockchain. So one example of that is that there's, um, there's a body of work going on to take blockchain to be able to track child refugees as they move across borders, to protect those children, to make sure that they don't get lost somewhere along the way, um, to make sure that terrible things don't happen to those children. It's incredibly important work. It's incredible application of that technology it's based on a group of people thinking outside the box in applying that framework in a way that just isn't something we would maybe typically think of um, to solve a really significant and serious risk as we, you know, as we tie back to things like climate change and people do need to, to move or civil unrest and, and global strife. And we do, we do have numbers of people um, that are making very, you know, very dangerous journeys. And this is a way to tap into a solution for that problem that's unique. Those are some really great examples about really thinking outside the box and how uh, we have to be expansive in thinking about kind of these new emerging trends and how we might tackle them. Um, 
So moving into some critical actions, are there any principles that you have that should guide businesses and companies and leaders to consider as they think about mitigating loss as the nature of risk continues to shift? Yeah. So I would say we, we all need to be willing to take a second look at the types of risks that we're exposed to and um, probably be willing to take action and maybe some action that you weren't necessarily considering before we were exposed to this different way of doing business and different way of thinking. You know, where you, where you think an action is warranted think about how you're going to implement that action. And it doesn't have to be all at once, right? It doesn't have to be, I've done things this way for 20 years and now I'm going to do things completely differently. Or, um, you know, I'm gonna change entirely the way that I find supplies for my business because of X, Y, and Z, or I'm going to relocate the entire operation. You know, it doesn't have to be that drastic right away. Um, but think about the risks, form a plan, um, think about things where we have to make small choices. So just little things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then those large globally impactful things that flow from those day-to-day -day choices. I would also say don't dismiss a solution out of hand because it isn't traditional or because it's not the way you've been doing things, don't be afraid to make mistakes because we, we are going to go down paths that are crazy and don't work. And um, in order to find solutions to some of this risk evolution that's going on, there are going to be crazy ideas that come up. There are going to be theories that uh, five years from now science proves are, are not valid or we change the way that we think about them. So we, we are going to be breaking eggs along the way. We're going to be doing it together. And a, a fear of making a wrong choice or a wrong decision is something that I think tends to hold a lot of people back. And, and we're going to have to be more accepting of seeing people put themselves out there and sometimes make mistakes doing it. Great, great. Those are some great principles. Is there one kind of phrase or um, that best expresses what your call to action um, to the folks watching this video and the people participating in this event? Yeah, so as I said before, this is a group of creative, smart, problem-solving people. I would say be engaged, stay engaged, and deliver solutions you believe in. Because if you believe in it, you're gonna be passionate about it and you're going to be successful. If you enjoyed this talk, there's more for you to explore. Visit the agenda page to register for a design session where you'll be able to discuss this theme and design a better future with five to 10 of your peers. Or look out for live sessions with this speaker happening throughout our event. Finally, check out the other talks on this theme or the four other themes in our exclusive on-demand library.